and let's get crafting. Over the next five weeks, I'm going to be teaching you the basics of crochet. But before we pick up our yarn and hook, I wanted to talk a little bit about the materials that we use in crochet. You're going to hear a lot of new terms and I want you to be a bit more familiar with them before we get started. In your supply bag, you've been given these items, including five mini balls of yarn. Now, the brand of the yarn that we are using is Lily's Original Cotton. Now, I chose cotton because as a fiber, it's more durable than acrylic or some of the other yarns, and it's machine washable and dryable, which will be a handy thing when you go to use your coasters. On the back of the label, you'll notice some symbols. This one here on the left, which shows a skein of yarn with the number four in the middle, that signifies the weight of this yarn. The weight is basically just a term for how thick the yarn is. Medium number four is, as it says, a medium weight, and it's one of the most common weights of yarn. So this is an average one. Thinner yarns will have a smaller number for the weight, and they can be more tightly wound and have less strands. Thicker yarns, like this, which are bulky, have a higher number weight. Now, if you'd like to use your own yarn to make these coasters, then while you're at the store, check the labels of the yarn you want for this symbol and the number four, and they should turn out close to the same size. It might not be exact, but it'll be close. Now, next to these, you'll see two similar boxes. These represent the gauge of this yarn. Now, we won't go into detail about gauge just yet, but in this one, you'll notice a crochet hook and five millimeters USH8. This is the recommended hook sign for this particular yarn, and it's the size hook that you've been given in your bag. So let's pick up our hook and talk about it. This is a crochet hook. Now, some people use different terms for the parts of it, but these are the terms that I'm going to use now and in later videos. This section right here is called the handle. This section from here to about here is the shaft. And the shaft is important because that represents the size of this hook, five millimeters diameter. So other hooks will have a thinner shaft. This section is referred to as the throat. Um, Inside the throat is the groove, and this right here is the point. Now, here are some other crochet hooks for you to see in comparison. The one you choose is sort of a matter of personal preference. They have different handles, different hook types. Some of them have a softer point. I chose this one, one, because of its longer handle, which can make it easier to manipulate, and two, because of the deep groove, which makes it easier to catch yarn, and I think it's perfect for beginners. Now, on this card thing, these two safety clip looking things are called stitch markers. You use them to insert into a stitch that you want to remember. Like say, you need to remember the exact middle of the piece. Then you can stick this in there and leave it there and it'll be a message saying, hey, this is where you need to stop, right? Also, if you have to set down your yarn and then go to something else, you hook this into the yarn so that it won't unravel while you're away from it. And then this is a tapestry needle, also sometimes called a yarn needle. You'll notice that the tip is blunt, not too sharp, and the eye is pretty wide wide enough to slip the yarn through. We use these mostly to weave in the ends after you finish a project and also to sew two pieces together if it's needed. Now, I hope you feel a bit more comfortable with all of these and that you feel ready to start learning to crochet. In the first lesson, the next lesson, I'll show you how to make a slip knot, how to chain stitch, and also the slip stitch. See you there!
this section of the hook, let me stop this from rolling, maybe, it's not gonna stop, okay, 